Alexis. Hello, I am uh, by trade a comedian, travelling uh, wordsmith, an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but you're actually the first comedian that I've actually had in the back of the cab. Genuine comedian, that is. Yeah, I've exactly. had a few people yeah. that think they're comedians. Well, I've had quite a few cabbies who say, oh, I'm a right comedian. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I've been doing sort of weird comedy basically for about um, uh, pretty much like a decade now, actually. Right. Which so how did, weird to say that. How did longer. it all start? How did I start? I yeah. started um, when I was at university actually, there was a competition, it was called the Daily Telegraph Open Mic Award and you could get up and you could do five minutes on stage with um, the two professional acts that had been there sort of touring the country. This, this was like back in 2001. And how, how, how did it go? Do you, can you, do you remember at all? Did people... I remember me getting away with stuff and there was like, and, and because you sort of write things down that you think are funny and it's only when you when they come out of your mouth on the stage that you either go oh great and you give yourself a pat on the back and go yeah that was funny or you go oh god that was misjudged oh that, what was I thinking uh, what was the what was the was attraction in the first place the comedy did you start off as like being into acting did you and then sort of think oh I could quite do this comedy stuff yeah or? a little bit actually I mean I always like comedy's a weird thing because I don't think anyone really ever thinks of it as a viable career option you might sort of you know, you might tell a few jokes or you might uh, just be a big fan of comedy. It was only when I went to university and I, I sort of, I did philosophy and psychology is what I studied there, but I, yeah, I just kind of, I, there, were, there were a lot of drama societies and they in turn did lots of little cabaret productions and that kind of thing. And I just, I just got a taste for doing, I sort of soon realised that I wasn't a very good serious actor. Yeah. Um, you know, I haven't got the face or demeanour for it. And so I kind of um, went, it went down the comedy route. And so at what, what, what point did you realise that, that uh, you could actually do this then, you could be a good comic? That's, yeah, this, that's a good question, because you sort of, like I said, I started in 2001 just as a knockabout, just you know, just to, just to see how it goes, and then it wasn't until really 2003 when um, me and Cy, uh, Thomas came to London and started doing comedy on the circuit, set up a, a little comedy club in London Bridge, down with laughter and um, you know yeah well, you sort of you just throw yourself into the open mic scene and it's a weird thing because you can you can leap up there for the first time and you're, you're technically a comic you are billed as yeah a comic like here's, here's a night of comedians even though you know you're doing maybe some terrible open mic night where I don't know, ninety percent of the act one would be dire. So I suppose you start calling yourself a comic when you when people actually start giving you money for it. Yeah. And I suppose really I didn't start really making a living out of it until maybe like five or six years in. So then, what okay, was well, your breakthrough act then? What what the hell I think you? like the breakthrough for me and the breakthrough for a lot of people is going up to do Edinburgh Festival. And that's, that's what I'm on my way to now. You are kindly driving me to a preview of my new show. What what act, what was your breakthrough act then? What was the, um, the show that... Well, I did a, I, my first ever show that I did at Edinburgh Fringe was, um, it was a show about the history of swearing. Right. And it was just something that I wrote because it interested me. And I sort of, you know, when you got to Edinburgh, uh, that's an hour show, that's an hour long show. And most people on the circuit, you know, you used to kind of, you build up by doing like your five minute spot, an open mic, you do 10 minutes, like if you're, you know, slightly advanced than that, and then when you start getting paid is when you've got a good 20 minute set, and like a good 20 minute set is, that means really having 40 minutes right. of material. Do you, so you like edit it down to your best stuff? Yeah, and also just having stuff that you can use as a backup, so if right. you have a tough gig, and you go, oh god, plan A isn't working, yeah. you have to have like a plan B to go down, and C and D and E for all the manner of gigs that you'll get. Uh, but that show ended up, yeah, it ended up sort of taking me all over the world. It was the people really? came from um, uh, Adelaide Fringe to see it. And said, no oh, way. You should get that, that, that is a long way to come. It is a long <laughs> way to come. <laughs> so I ended up sort of doing it. I did it in so many countries. I did it really? in. I did it all over Australia. I've done it in New Zealand. I did it in Vietnam. You've been to Nam as Rome. well. I went to Nam with the yeah. You weren't there. Doing, a, swear, doing a swearing show. In Vietnam. And then what? What? sort of followed that have you so the swearing show after that was when I sort of developed my character Marcel Lugon which is uh, kind of now my main breadwinner really is uh, a <laughs> sort of laconic pissed off Frenchman the antithesis of a good compare <laughs> like someone who just didn't give a shit he was oh, I don't care what you next uh, whatever oh, yeah. you know just just, <laughs> just to get drunk and get paid and leave and weirdly 
that just became my main thing. And I sort of I started writing more and more jokes, taking out on the circuit. And, and when you've done the show in in Paris, of the French, they've lapped it up, have they? Sort of, like some do and some don't. Because well, well, they go, who's this Englishman? Bit, He's taking the piss out. Yeah, of it's us. a bit too close to home for some of them. I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I did when I used to do Marcel. I thought it would be funny to just kind of have to finish off a bottle of wine throughout a performance, and also a whole wheel of camembert <laughs> before I started to feel decidedly ill. So yeah, no, it's it, yeah, it's a funny reaction in in, in France because I think that those that get it and get what it's, it's a send up I mean it's, it's, it's a homage it's like uh, to, to, to borrow from the French it's an homage it's like you know I love the French I think they're very very funny people and they get they don't get enough credit for it yeah and it's uh, yes <laughs> I guess in my strange way I'm sort of spreading the French humour for them in, <laughs> in the capital so tell us about uh the the show that um, you're doing for Edinburgh then, and, we're, and, the, and the, what, I'm, what I'm taking you to do today. Then. Well, so this is this is a new show called Alexis Jeebus versus the World, uh, and it's, uh, it's a pun. Obviously, everyone loves a pun in the title. <laughs> it's a load of little comic verses. It's very silly. It's probably the least focused show that I've ever done. <laughs> right. It really is, which is which I really enjoy. It's 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 um it's just lots of little silly uh, songs, poems. Um, Sort of slightly based around places that I've travelled to, but, but more often than not, not. <laughs> and um, I wanted to do something in verse again, but I figured, you know, I thought I'd do it um, a, a slightly simpler one this time, just lots of little little pieces. And yeah, that's it really. And then I'm doing I'm doing a Marcel show up in Edinburgh as well. I'm doing Are you, uh, right, yeah, okay. it's like an improvised one. Marcelli calls a wine list. It's another pun. I can't resist them. I can't get away. <laughs> <A> wine. <laughs> uh, is that that sounds quite scary though, doing an improvised show? I mean, is that literally? Have you improvised it, or you're doing? You're improvising it live. I'm improvising it live, so right. it's kind of. Well, you don't really know what an you're improvised doing show. Doing. Not live is a written show. What? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you everything could, is you could, everything you, is improvised to start with. Yeah, exactly. I, I'll, I'll take your point. I'll take your point. That is I'm true. being very pedantic. <laughs> that but is true. It is, true. It's kind of yeah. So there's a few little set of pieces in there, but mostly it's working off. Uh, audience suggestions, right? Uh, and that just sounds scary. Well, uh, this show that I'm about to do, this is actually in the spoken word section in Edinburgh. Right. So that's kind of taking the pressure off a little bit. So right. <laughs> it's kind of jokes are a bonus. Uh, <laughs> it is definitely spoken word. You can't deny that. Yeah, I've sort of I've gone down that path a little bit more in the in the last couple of years because it's it's just it's the spoken word section. It's, it's very it's very freeing actually. Yeah. It's very and the comedy. You know, people expect a certain amount of jokes per minute, I suppose, yeah. with comedy. But you can also get all manner of emotions out of people. From, from, I mean, you can with comedy. To well, some are extent. you saying that you're going to try and make people cry as well as laugh? Well, not in this one. This is very silly. Yeah. But in Cars and Girls, it, it had a bit of an emotional really? ending. Uh, so, where can where are you performing then in Edinburgh? I'm doing this show. I'm doing uh, Alexis Dubis versus the world at the Voodoo Rooms. Right. At uh, five fifteen, a nice gentle afternoon slot. And then I'm doing uh, Marcelo Conn's wine list at 9:30, late night, rowdy Ooh. spot. At uh, actually, it's not late night for Edinburgh at all. <laughs> uh, that's uh, the Pleasant Stone. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if people want to book tickets, where do they where would they go to? Uh, can they go onto your website? Just go to the Ed Fringe right website for that. Edfringe.com is probably the best thing. And if if people want to find out more information about you as a as an act and about a comedian, me, where would they go, go for that? To my website, ah. alexisdubus.com. We just flash it on the screen now, like. Yeah, like you like do that. subscribe, subscribe. Yeah, you're, you're not gonna make me look a dick, are you? You'll flash that up. <laughs> yeah. Good. That's there. Um, yeah, so that really, alexisdubus.com. Just to finish, yeah. seeing as you are obviously are a comedian, um, what's your favourite joke? Oh, you must no, have a favourite joke. Say that. Yeah, come on. My favourite joke is the orange for a head joke. The orange for a head? Orange for a head. Right. Have you heard this one? No, I haven't. This is great. I, 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 I would love to find out who, who first told this joke, because <laughs> it's a beauty. I mean, it's not for everyone. This is a real, this is a, a sort of conversation Ender or continue. This is a real. <laughs> this splits a room. Yeah. All right. So there's a bloke walking down the road, and uh, he sees another guy walking towards him, and he's uh, uh, he's got an orange for a head, a normal sized guy, but you know, a real sized orange for, for a head. He's walking towards him, and he's, he's thinking, oh, I can't let this go. I've, I've got a. I'm sure he gets this a lot, but here we go, mate. Sorry, I, I couldn't ever notice you've, you've got an orange for a head. And he goes, oh yeah, 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 and I do, I, yeah, I do get this quite a lot. 
Um, yeah, do you want me to explain? He goes, yeah, if, if you wouldn't mind, it's, I'm curious. He goes, um, well, I was walking down the road myself one day, uh, saw in the gutter there just a dusty, dusty old lamp, and uh, picked it up, looked like it needed a clean, gave it a, a bit of a dust, and uh, lo and behold, a genie <laughs> it pops out, would you believe it? He goes, oh, really? Yeah, it really happened. Uh, genie popped out, and uh, he says, I am the genie of the lamp, and I will grant you three wishes. He goes, oh, oh yeah, okay, wow, wow, what, what, what was your first wish? He goes, well, the first wish, I wish for um, uh, infinite wealth. So I'd have a bank account that just kept topping itself up, never have to worry about nice. money. And the guy goes, yeah, good, good wish, yeah. Yeah. Nice, he let, he let you have that, yeah, yeah, he let me have that, yeah. <laughs> His um, uh, second one, uh, second wish, uh, well, I wish for um, uh, the most wonderful uh, life partner, a wife that would uh, bear me beautiful children, would, would never leave me, and, and uh, would be my soul, my soulmate for life. We would, we would have, uh, spend the rest of our lives happy together. Oh, nice, good. And that That's happened. Not yeah, bad he goes, yeah, he goes, oh, it's lovely. He goes, yeah, what was, what was your third wish? He goes, oh, third wish. Uh, third wish. I wish for an orange for a head. <laughs> so you're in the. Good, you're in that <laughs> camp. Fucking, Not everyone is. No, it's just fucking ridiculous. It is ridiculous. <laughs> and yet, my favourite. I've just wasted a lot of your time. A lot of your viewers' time, if you if you decide to include that. I'm going to include that. Oh, yeah, I've got right, to include yeah. that. It's my favourite. I've got to include job. that. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a classic. Yeah, it's uh, it's good. I like. I like I'm an orange now. Actually, I've, got, yeah. I've been been holding on to this whole time. Yeah. Well, it's, I think on that on that on that moment, it's probably <laughs> uh, good to good time to sign off. So, right. thank you very much for uh, taking part in the gentleman cabbie. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Cheers, dude. Oh. Thank you. Mm. <laughs>